my name is Nicholas J. Gibson and uh, I make guitars. I should say uh, I can't call my company Gibson because I'd be in trouble. <laughs> so I'll go with the middle name instead. <laughs> I love the sound you can get out of a guitar as a player. I was a player before I started making stuff. I just couldn't afford a guitar that I really wanted. So I looked at it and I was like, I reckon I could you know, try and make that with some tools. So I gave that a go and it worked really well. And then that set me on this path of going, oh, well, you know, if I can make one, why can't I make more? So I came up with this shape and um, took those philosophies of what I liked in guitars that I was playing and kind of put them into my own shape and my own yeah, take on the electric guitar, so yeah. My, I guess, philosophy behind making guitars is having lots of wood that's accessible for us to get, especially in Australia. I enjoy making instruments that sing, like they, they, they say, the wood sounds good, the pickups sound good, and when it's put together, it's quite simple. A lot of modern kind of styles have got these pickups that require batteries and all that sort of stuff. Simple pickups, nice wood, and, a, and an input jack and just go sort of thing. So this one is where it all started. This was the first guitar I ever made. Right here. Hit my roof. Pickups are gone now because I liked them so much to put them in another guitar. But one day I'll put it together and I'll put it all up in its own case. My biggest influences in guitar making um, would have to be a guy by the name of Paul Reed Smith and um, the Fender Music Company as well. I like both their approaches to, to making instruments. Um, fenders do a lot of bolt-on style necks, which I really like. Um, PRS or Paul Reed Smith instruments, they don't do that. They do uh, more like humbucker instruments and rock sort of instruments. I like to think that my guitars are somewhere in the middle. Long term, I'd love to be able to make guitars as just art pieces, <laughs> functional art. But um, kind of my main tool that I use in the early stages of guitar making is uh, a CNC machine. Um, so that's the, this machine just behind me. Uh, it's made by a company or designed by a company called Inventables and you basically just buy it online and put it together yourself and if you've done it right it should work. I've, the first guitars, the first probably four or five I made, I made by hand uh, and it just was super dangerous <laughs> like working with high speed you know, cutters and tools and that sort of stuff. Um, I just looked at it and I thought one day I'm gonna lose a finger. So it, it means that every guitar body can be exactly the same if I, if I use the machine. Um, I don't use the machine for everything. It's just for that initial shape, you know, the, the rough shape of the guitar, the rough shape of the neck, and, the, and then everything else is done by hand. Other than that, it's like countless files, Sanding, 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 sanding. <laughs> well, initially I started um, the Jade Guitars thing just to make my own instrument. Um, and there wasn't really much more thought other than I'll just make my own instrument and see what happens after that. And then I, I, I wound my own pickups and stuff for the original guitar that I made. Um, and then a ton of people, after they heard it, at gigs and stuff were like, where, you know, where did you buy it? And I had to explain that I didn't, I made it. Um, which is always met with a few, like, oh, that's amazing. Um, which I, I just find what, you know, my initial thing was no one would want to buy one of my guitars because they could just make their own. <laughs> it's simple. Um, but I guess that's just something I take for granted is that that's a skill that I have and it's a skill I enjoy using. I love making things. So after making my own one, I had a few friends kind of approach me and go, hey, would you make me one? So it kind of just grew organically that way um, to a point where I just sat down one day and I was like, okay, I'm gonna plan out a first batch of five or six instruments and then just see if I can sell them. I think that the, the thing that's given me the greatest sense of achievement is when a complete stranger picks up a guitar that I've made, whether it's one of my ones or one, one that a friend or a customer has got, uh, and I'm in their presence and they're just like, this is an amazing instrument. Like, that's that's a huge sense of achievement because I think, to, like, I know what I value in a guitar and, and, and I don't pick up a guitar and say, that's an amazing instrument, unless it's like made by one of my guitar making icons, <laughs> you know? So to hear someone say that about one of my instruments is a bit, um, 
yeah, unbelievable, yeah. I think if I'd started with this huge plan of wanting to make guitars and be able to sell them, um, like I already set that huge benchmark for myself, like I've just kind of fallen into, uh, you know, it's luck. It's luck more than anything, but if you just do what you're passionate about, if you just do uh, what makes you happy, and ultimately if you can make a living out of that and people want to pay you to do that, then like that's that's the dream, that's what you're aiming for. So just do what you gotta to do today for your in your dream and then tomorrow do what you gotta to do tomorrow and as it just grows, just keep keep following it and keep, you know, seeing it get bigger.